Okay, the subject of this video is going to be the Harbinger. Uh, I'm predicting that on September 14th, 2015, we will have an economic downturn. Seven years before this date was the crash of Lehman Brothers and the great stock market crash of 2008. So seven years will actually take you to September 13th, which is a Sunday, uh, and then the markets will open on Monday. Now, the reason I'm basing this projection is every seven years, there's a correction. So, uh, 2001, 9-11, then the markets didn't open for a few days, but on that day, which was also uh, the last day of Elu in the Hebrew calendar, uh, was seven years to the day from there to there, and then uh, the stock market crashed on that day. On that day it dropped, uh, on, on 2008 Lehman Brothers it dropped 770, and then if you go back another seven years, uh, less a week, minus a week, you come up to the bond market crash in 1994, where about 1.5 trillion was lost. Okay, so that's seven years, between here and here was seven years, less a week, here to here was seven years. My prediction is here to here will be seven years. Now, if you go back another seven years from 1994, you come up to 1987. And Black Monday was seven years minus one week from the 1994 crash. Well, then if you go back another seven years, there was a recession going on and um, uh, in, in 1980, you also had the peak of stagflation. Uh, in other words, it had high unemployment and high interest rates. If you go back seven more years to 1973, uh, Nixon was in office. We had a recession and then the uh, Arab oil embargo. Now, going back another seven years in 1966 there was another recession and then the height of the Vietnam War funny thing happens after that these were all downturns it also happened in a megaphone pattern uh, uh, let's go to 2001 the stock market was approximately at 12.9 and it dropped 12,900 and it dropped 8,400 and if you look at when Lehman Brothers happened it was at 14.5 and it dropped down to 6.9 well right about now as I speak it's August 1st a month ago or two months ago it was at 18,500 so a megaphone pattern is happening. It's going up higher and it's going down lower because they're inflating the bubble with fake money, QEs. Uh, back to this chart. So uh, every seven years, you can go back to the creation of the country. There's been an uptake or a downtake in, in our uh, economy. So the 66 was a drop, 58, excuse me 59 and 52 were the uptakes uh, in 45 there was World War II and we were uh, the Bretton Woods agreement happened which made us the world reserve currency but sometime between here and the death of JFK was the peak of America we had the most buying power, the least amount of debt. Now, if you go back, if you go back from 45, we've got uh, 
the war started in September of 38. Uh, Hitler and Stalin both invaded Poland. Uh, Hitler's just the one that, that's talked about, but uh, actually the Russians took 20% of Poland. And then seven years before that, 1931, Oh, well, that doesn't fit the pattern. The uh, Great Depression was in 29. The Great Depression started in 29. There was a little bit of an up uptake. And then Britain, who was the world reserve currency at the time, got off the gold standard and threw the whole world into a depression. Now, most of these downturns actually occur on the last day of Elul this day right here the last day of Elul every seven years like I said sometimes it's a little before a little after but lately it's been right on the day and then the following month is Tishri uh, that's it in uh, Hebrew and uh, the astrological signs fit exactly in the Hebrew calendar because it's based on the moon so what does this have to do with the calling this video the harbinger well if you go back uh, to the founding of the country it happened at this bad boy up here shortly it happened Make sure I can see it and I'll be handing the, the the founding of the country happened in 17 in the 1700s and uh, Washington the first capital of the United States wasn't Washington DC a lot of people think it was Philadelphia the very first capital of the United States was New York City so uh, George, well, you can read this in the history books. George Washington left St. Paul's Church after saying a prayer with all the uh, high-ranking dignitaries, uh, most of whom signed our Constitution. And they left there and they walked halfway through the field alongside the Hudson River. And then they said a prayer and they committed the United States to God. Now, there could be an argument made that there's only been two countries dedicated to, to God through, through history. One was Israel on uh, Mount Zion, Mount Moriah, the Temple Mount. Those are all three the same things. And uh, uh, that, that would be ground zero for Israel would be the Temple Mount. Ground zero for the U.S. Was where we, would be where Washington gave the... Uh, inauguration address where he dedicated uh, America to God and if you look at if you look at where he he did it after leaving st. Paul's Cathedral which is or st. Paul's Church which is still there by the way he walked and, and you can trace it along ground zero for the US was also ground zero for 9-11 it was just about straight in between the Twin Towers uh, the purview of this video is not to really dwell on why and the wherefores of 9-11 but let me just say that the covenant that was set forth then was broken on 9-11 in 2001 uh, this uh, is covered extensively in uh, Jonathan Kahn's book called the harbinger I've got the front cover of it here it's also covered in the blood moons not so much the harbinger part but the things that are fixing to happen here, uh, John Hagee's The Last Blood Moon is going to happen. The Last Blood Moon is going to happen uh, September 28th of, of 2015, about 50 days. Uh, like I said, this is August 1st, and uh, we've got about uh, 42 days till the uh, end of Elul which would be September 13th and that's when I'm predicting the crash on the following Monday because the markets won't be open uh, Isaac Newton calculated that on September 23rd of this month would be the start of the tribulation on Yom Kippur 
And like I said, September 28th, 2015, the last blood moon of the Tetrad. And, and if you look back in history, all the Tetrads, the exciting stuff happens on the last one. And this will be the last Tetrads for over four centuries. And I've got a little chart here showing, I'll try to go over it better so you can see some of the things that happened at the various Tetrads. Now, I want to give you some homework like I always do. You need to look up Isaiah 9.10. That's the uh, Harbinger uh, verse in the Bible. Uh, Harry Dent on YouTube, he's got a, he go, covers the demographic cliff, but that's why uh, I'm covering this from a lot of different angles. The book, The Fourth Turning. And then there's three guys on the internet that predicted a lot of the stock market uh, and, and trends of the last 20 years that I can vouch for. Peter Schiff, Gerald Salente of Trends Journals, and Mark Farber. Now you say, well, what does that have to do? I don't have any stock, I just have 401k. This is the standard breakup of a 401k. The easiest way to describe it is it's a split between 60% stocks and 40% bonds. When uh, they took the hit, when the U.S. took the hit on 9-11 uh, at the economic level and uh, the hit it took after uh, Lehman Brothers, those were primarily the 60% stock the bond market dropped in 94 the stock market was still strong at that point this time both are going to go away uh, the i got batman is patrolling the front yard here for me come here bat this is batman he's been in a lot of the other videos here i gotta call him over here he can't see very good anymore uh Anyway, uh, back to the story. So, well, what does that have to? What does the harbinger have to do with uh, what's going on now? Well, uh, if you look at what Bush said right after 9/11, he quoted uh, a lot of stuff straight out of the Bible. Uh, the uh, the actual uh, speech he gave he didn't write it obviously somebody else did but they he was quoting the bible well, he was quoting the verse where uh, uh the israelites said we're going to rebuild we're going to make it better than before and they were basically shaking their hands at gods after syria uh destroyed their temple they cut down all the sycamore trees and they they uh, tore down the temple, messed it up. So, uh, St. Saint, Saint John's Church figures big in this thing called the Harbinger. So, that was actually just on the border of the World uh, Trade Center complex. And it didn't get damaged because as the buildings fell, there was a giant tree that took, took the heat from the... Uh, uh, from the uh, impact of all the debris falling and it just happened to be a sycamore tree well that tree was destroyed now the powers that be I know wanted to make it into a nematon I won't say anything more about that you can look that up on your own uh, but with everything going on uh, the people that, that own the church because like I said it didn't get damaged miraculously that tree took it all uh, they dug it up and they uh, they bronzed it it's 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 like an artifact now. You can, you can actually see it online. There's pictures of it in Jonathan Kahn's follow-up book called The Shemitah, which breaks down the seven-year cycle all throughout history. Uh, when, when, when they were rededicating Ground Zero and starting to build it again, uh, the, that tree was gone and uh, they, they flew in a pine tree to plant in front of it. Now the significance of that is the Jewish temple, after they cut down the sycamore trees, they uh, planted uh, cedars of Lebanon all around the new temple. 
Well, there's there's only about 6,000 words in the Hebrew lexicon, and the same word you would use for a cedars of Lebanon would be an evergreen tree. The context would, would, would spell out the rest of what the meaning of the sentence was. Uh, so a pine tree and a cedar of Lebanon would both be considered uh, evergreen trees. Now, that tree didn't make it. It was cut down, and I would like for you to look it up one, what day and, and the significance of that day of when it got cut down and, and because it uh because it uh because it uh it, it 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 failed and they had to cut it they had to cut it down uh barack obama when they were dedicating ground zero said a whole lot of other weird stuff that happened to, to fall in line with the isaiah harbinger prophecy i'd like for you to look those up but the, the main point of this is we are reliving the harbingers of the Bible. And uh, America's got uh, $18 trillion in actual debt, $80 trillion in unfunded, unfunded liabilities. Even as I speak, Puerto Rico is going to be uh, unable to make its payments on Monday. Uh, the Greek, ongoing Greece situation, the whole world is, is flowing in debt. And uh, so anyway, I'm, I'm picking September 14th. I said the, the Harbinger will actually run out on the 13th, but because of the markets not being open, I'm expecting it to be September 14th, which is approximately 43 days from now. Uh, there's a lot of other interesting stuff happening. There's a total lunar eclipse, uh, the 15th, the Pope will be addressing a joint session of Congress for the first time. The UN is going to partition Israel, uh, holy city of Jerusalem, make it a capital of Palestine. It's going to be a, up for a vote at the United Nations. It'll probably pass. And then uh, the 23rd of, of September is Yom Kippur. And the 28th is the last of the blood moons. So I'm expecting... Uh, judgment on the U.S. and then judgment on the enemies of Israel at the end of this month. A uh, little something I want to throw in there. The uh, United States is not specifically mentioned in the Bible. However it is, you just need to look. Uh, there's, there's a, there, it talks about in the last days that a uh, the whore of Babylon uh, shall ride the beast, and on her name is written the word mystery. Well, the mystery is this. Uh, Babylon is talked about in the last days, and people thought it was going to be Nebuchadnezzar rebuilding it. It's not. Uh, Babylon in the last days is the United States. It talks about this Babylon uh, being a wonder among the nations and falling almost overnight. And it sits upon many waters. Well... What sits upon many waters? The United States. Alaska sits on the Pacific Ocean and the Arctic Ocean. Hawaii is totally surrounded by water. The left coast, Oregon, Washington, California. The uh, east coast and the Gulf Coast. We are the ones that sit on many waters. And uh, who is the woman that rides the beast? What is the most iconic uh, emblem of America? You can make the argument it's the Statue of Liberty. Now I'm going to have a link on my website talking about what the Statue of Liberty is, who it represents, what the face specifically represents, but the woman riding the beast is the Statue of Liberty. The beast is the financial district in metaphor. Uh, since you know we are the world currency now and we've done all this stuff through just made up uh, money, uh, but we'll be falling and uh, so anyway, that's the uh, the woman riding the beast. The, the mystery Babylon is the U.S. and the uh, the whore of Babylon is the Statue of Liberty. And like I said, I'll have a link to my site, timbosplace.com, to uh, the Statue of Liberty mystery and who's on it and what it represents. Uh, you've got 43 days till this happens. Uh, I hope I'm wrong but I think I'm not. 
Uh, a lot of people are picking, you know, one of the one of the other days here on the list for the crash. There's all kinds of people talking about the crash in a secular sense. Uh, if whenever you see this video, hopefully you'll see it long before the the crash happens. But remember, one day of preparation is better than no days. Two days is better than one, three, and so on. You can do a lot in a short period of time to get prepared. Uh, that's all. And uh, again, I want to thank uh, thank Batman here. Where are you going, Batman? Batman's getting old now, but he's still guarding guarding the guarding the forest here, making sure no members of the Rainbow Coalition get me. Oh, don't fall in the hole there, Batman. Yeah, he's he's almost blind now, but uh, we do the best we can with what we got. Uh, say goodbye, Batman. Batman. There he is. Oh, here he comes. Okay. Thank you. I'm out.